everyone. Hey, Yvette. Hey, Joe. Welcome to the T4L show. 2018 was our best year ever, Yvette. But we're already in 2019. Can you believe it? I know. And it's going to be huge. 2019 is going to be our year of tech. And we want it to be your year of tech. If you're joining us for the first time, T4L is technology for learning. And this is going to be your home to learn about all things new and innovative for use in the classroom and in your school. What's on the show today? Well, we've got heaps in store today. We're looking at communications and how we can better communicate with you. We've got some Minecraft updates. We'll be taking a look at some special features. We'll even have a shoot to a new se a new segment that we've got called Three Minutes With. That's right. Don't tell them too much. We want them to tune in to the very end. Absolutely. <laughs> but what we also really want is some feedback from you guys about what you want to do in your school. We've got some amazing new tech that we're going to be trialing this year and we want you to be involved. Absolutely. Look, let's throw to Nell and Stu to get the show started. Hey guys, I'm Nell. Hi, I'm Stu. And we just want to take a minute to talk to you about how we're going to engage you guys in the coming year. Doing a bit of a revamp of our communications. So as part of that, I'm Nell. I'm new here and I'm doing a lot of that revamp. Do you all know Stu? Uh, thanks, Nell. Um, technology is a, a changing thing, a changing world, and we've got uh, 2,200 schools across New South Wales uh, with a, a huge number of teachers out there, and trying to keep them all engaged and enthused about using and, and finding new technologies and seeing how they can adopt it in the classroom is a challenge. It's something that, uh, that we struggle with all the time, and we, we as service providers are wanting to make sure that the, the resources that we provide to our schools is something that's going to be used effectively and being able to engage those teachers out there and let them know about the latest things that, we, that we're offering is uh, a really important step for us. We are looking, because of these problems, in engaging all of the teachers around you guys who maybe don't watch the T4L show, they don't read TFL news, but they still need to use technology in the classroom every day. One of the things we need to do is start engaging those teachers who might not seek us out by themselves proactively. Part of the way we're doing that is that we're sent out a bit of a survey. And the survey, I mean, it aims to just look at where people are communicating online about technology and Yeah, we, we know most of the channels that we have internally within uh, the department uh, and who those people are that are using those, but we also know that there are people outside of that that are using social media, that are using other avenues, uh, that are getting together in various other networks. And we want to know how we can maybe approach them uh, through their, the channels that they use currently uh, to try and provide them a little bit more of support. So Nell, you'd say it's really important for us to get as many teachers as possible to, to provide that information yeah. through that survey? So, and I guess that's the big thing that we kind of wanted out of this segment, segment is to talk to you guys about maybe sharing the survey. We're going to put a link in the description of this video um, and share it with the teachers you know who don't know anything about T4L, who don't engage with us at all. We want to hear from them because they're the ones that need us the most and they are the ones that find it hardest to find us. The main point is share it, get people to respond to it. Um, we're gonna keep it open for probably another month or so, and then we're gonna collate all the results and, and use that to make sure that they're engaged and that they're getting the resources that they need every day. Yeah, so help us to help you to help them. Yvette, what are you getting up to over there? I'm doing the survey. Oh, yeah, I did know you are a bit of a Facebook I know, user. have you done it yet? Come on, I need the computer. Oh, Don't right. bet on my back. <laughs> Got to get on with some Minecrafting. Okay. Okay, now I've recorded a little segment with Michael. We're going to talk everyone about the updates with Minecraft for 2019. Okay, so we're here with the Minecraft guru, Michael Clipsham, to talk all about Minecraft. But for those of you who don't know what Minecraft is, Michael, spell it out for them. Minecraft. Minecraft's like a, a virtual Lego world. You can get into a computer software, you can build things, you uh, generate worlds, and you can actually do some pretty cool coding things with it too. That's pretty amazing. And you use bricks just like this, don't just you? Like this one. Can we chuck it away now? Please. Absolutely. Okie dokie. There we go. So what about if, if schools did it in 2018? Because so many jumped in. There was a lot. 
and they want to get started in 2019. Something happened, didn't it? Yeah, we uh, re reset all the licenses oh. for 2019. Okay, so what do you need to do? Sign up for them again. Now, where do I go if I'm after some resources to get started? Right, so some resources, there's heaps of resources available. I'm going to start off with number one, the global Minecraft website. Absolutely. Education.minecraft.net It is fabulous. What can yeah. you find on there? Oh, there's uh, worlds you can download, there are lesson plans, there's, uh, there's a community on there as well for uh, global Minecrafters. I found some resources, but the kids are still way ahead of me. Yep. What do I need to do to go searching for some professional learning to help me out? Ah, so professional learning. You'll want to start engaging with the STEM Share crew. They're doing a whole bunch of professional learning out there on how you can use Minecraft in the classroom. That is fabulous. So search for at STEM underscore share on Twitter or go to the STEM Share group on Yammer to get connected with that team. And don't forget to jump onto the Yammer Minecraft group as well. So we yes. did forget that there are lots of other resources. Oh. That's my fault, Michael, other <laughs> than right. just There's the website. So many communities to look up. Yes, but yes. So many places you can get help with Minecraft. That is fantastic. So just to finish off, if you are after or in search of some more inspiration, there's a really awesome competition, a real world competition oh, yes. that's Can't going on that right now. So the Western Sydney Airport Minecraft competition. Oh, a big one. Fantastic. Get started. Loads of prizes. There's lots of professional there's a learning, big prize isn't there? For that competition. Yes, yeah. it's dollars, isn't it? <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. Okay, so get onto that. You can Google it. There's a link to it in the Yammer group as well. Yes. So make sure you look for that. And there's professional learning in lots of places across Western Sydney that you can jump into and connect with. So engage people. Mm. And do we see them in? In Yammer. Absolutely. See them in Yammer and then see them in Minecraft. I love Minecraft, so that was a great update. And even in my English classroom, we use Minecraft, can you believe it, uh, to rebuild Shakespearean worlds. So even things like getting students to build a proscenium arch, such a word that English teachers love, that's what we were getting students to do, was to reimagine the dr dramatic worlds and stagecraft of Shakespeare. So wow. it's amazing that different things you can do with Minecraft. My goodness, Eva, you've totally lost me with what you're talking about there, but I know the English teachers out there will know they exactly will what you're that. talking about. Yeah, yeah, it is a fantastic cross-curricular mm. tool, that's yes. for sure. Okie dokes, now let's not waste any time. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to flip out to the amazing Yvette and Gil as they talk about all the ways that you can get involved in some of our innovation work in 2019. <laughs> Gil, I thought you were working in Melbourne today. Hi Yvette, I am working in Melbourne. This is an amazing telepresence robot. Well that's very handy. So this is a telepresence robot that you're using. Do you want to tell everyone a bit more about it? I'd love to. <laughs> From this angle it looks like an iPad on a Segway. Uh, but it's got amazing uses in the classroom and it could be something that your school might be interested in trialling for us. Telepresence robots are really cool. What looks like an iPad on a Segway allows me to be in a different state and using the internet be able to attend any sort of meetings. So right now, I'm here with Yvette talking to you guys all about this technology. And let me just share with this, this technology is really easy to use. It's a little bit like using a video game. I'm sitting here in front of a computer, I'm actually moving around using the keyboard and I can see what's going on through the main camera just like playing a video game. So most students will intuitively be able to use this technology. And Gil, when you're walking around using the robot, do you find that people actually look you in the eye and talk to you face to face? Is that one of the really great features of using a telepresence robot? Not just are they looking at the screen, therefore looking at me, people will come running to, to actually see what's going on. So our hope is to introduce this technology into schools to allow students who may be ill or spend extended time in a hospital, allow them to come into the classroom and also be able to socialise with their friends in class. Oh, it's an awesome technology. It really allows a student to be at school just as if they were walking around the playground even. Absolutely. You know, the difference between this is if you're doing a video conference on your computer, you're locked down. But what's so wonderful about this is just before I came to speak to you, Yvette, I ran into another colleague and we were able to have a conversation. So this allows the freedom to be able to be social as well as actually get the work done. So you can be in a classroom, move around, then go head out with your friends to recess or be able to go on an outing. 
So this is a really positive technology for kids that might be toughing it out and allow them to stay in touch with their school friends and their teachers and to be a part of the group while they may be in a hospital, school or in bed at home. Um, we're really looking for schools to participate in a trial using telepresence robots. So if this might be something that's of use to your students, why don't you get in touch with us and we'll talk you through how we can help you with this in school. Gil, anything else? No, that's it. I'm looking forward to students using this technology and I will, I'm sure I'll see you uh, at, at a school or if not, I'll telepresence in. Sounds good. How handy would that telepresence robot be in a staff meeting? <laughs> Thinking of staff meetings, we've got a STEM share community meeting after this, haven't we, Yvette? We do. Ooh. But speaking of STEM share... If you haven't booked a STEM share kit, then now is the right time to go into Oliver and make that booking. Lots of kits for you to choose from. Oh, you don't know about STEM share? Lots of amazing technology that schools can borrow. Try it for a term. There's robotics, there's 3D printing, there's filming and virtual reality for both primary and secondary. Right now, I've got a whole bunch of people learning about virtual reality for the kits that are about to arrive at their school. In fact, I was recently at Greystains High School and had a look at their virtual reality experience, which I really encourage you to go and have a look at the case study that we filmed and you can learn more about VR. To learn more about STEM Share and how you can book a kit for your school, there's a link in the description that'll take you straight to the STEM Share Learning Library. Now it's time to get out your calendars because we want to tell you about all the events we've got planned for Term 1. First up, this term is a power-up. Not sure what that is? Check this out. TFL Power Up is all about getting teachers connected with the vendors so that they can get the training they need into the classrooms themselves. Whether it's Apple, Microsoft or Google, teachers get hands-on training and exposure to the vendors themselves. This is an incredible opportunity and we invite you to get involved in the next TFL Power Up. Wow, can't wait. Where are we headed first? First up, we're going to Parramatta. On the 6th of March. And then we're heading to Goulburn. On the 18th of March. That's right. And then we're heading further south to Ulladulla. On the 20th of March. And then over to Queanbeyan. On the 11th of April. We're looking forward to seeing you there, but we also have some other events coming up. We do. We've got our Interact Ed conference happening in Wagga on the 3rd of April. And then coming up, we've got the Sand Pit. What date's that on? That's right here, ATP, 13th of March. And we look forward to seeing you on those days. Can't wait to see you there. So recently we were lucky enough to catch up with James Dwyer from Modern Teaching Aids. And let's cross and see how he developed his passion for robotics. I guess one of the things that I really like is being the idea that I'm creating a, a improved education system. I'm contributing towards making the learning experience of students a better experience. My name's James Dwyer and I work for Modern Teaching Aids and my role at the company is to run professional development for teachers in Australia. So I travel all over the, all over the country basically running workshops for teachers on how to use digital technologies. My, my colleague actually came out and demonstrated the robotics equipment at the school and um, I straight away, it just clicked for me. I could just see the learning potential of it, what students will get out of it, how exciting it is to, to be able to create and code something that actually does something in the real world. You know, it moved from the old style, you know, just programming on a screen to something would physically happen. What we're trying to do, I, I think, as an entire education system, is give kids the skills to create. Everyone can consume technology, but we're trying to 
develop learners and students that can create and use the tools to, to create new technology and use it in new and innovative ways. The skills that you get from, from coding and programming and, and doing those sort of things, the logical programming, the resilience that comes from it, is what we're trying to you know, instill in the students. One of the most exciting areas coming is definitely virtual reality. And no one's quite sure how it's going to be used and there's lots of ideas. It just has so much potential to change how we interact, how we meet people, and, you know, how you socialise with people overseas. You know, we, we really don't quite know and I think that's an incredibly exciting area. My favourite by far still comes back to the, the LEGO EV3. I just think it's a, a fabulous platform. But what you can do with it, the engineering aspects, as far as STEM goes, it's one of the ones that really smashes engineering out of the park. The skills that kids are getting out of the digital technology stream, you know, learning stream, if you like, the, the logical thinking, the problem solving, the resilience, it's inevitable. Anyone who's learned to code has to put up with the sort of frustration that it doesn't work perfectly the first time. You've got to go back, you've got to revisit it, you've got to um, change one thing, observe. That sort of really um, iterative learning, if you like, is crucial. If you're anxious or nervous about it, just get in and try it. It's one of those cases, um, you're not going to break the technology. The main thing I'd suggest is change one thing at a time. Don't add 10, 20 different things press the go button and wonder why it doesn't do what you want expecting it to. Just add one thing, make one change, see what that does, and, and think about what you're expecting it to do first versus what it does. Geez, we get to meet some interesting people in this job. Absolutely. Speaking of which, I had a great chat the other day with someone who I find really inspiring and somebody who absolutely loves working with technology. We have a new series coming out this year that's going to help your students connect with industry and help think about what careers they might be able to go into. So we're catching up with cool people with cool jobs. First up is Annabelle Asprey, who's Head of Education over at ABC. <laughs> I had a really interesting pathway to this particular role because I initially trained as a teacher and I didn't even want to be a teacher when I was in year 12. Being a teacher for 10 years, I was then um, worked for an organisation called the History Teachers Association where I helped lots of teachers with their teaching of history. But I also became very interested in the way that technology was used in education. I helped develop um, the History Teachers Online, um, online community and from there I then became part of the ABC. When I was at school, when I was in year 12, I think I wanted to be um, an actor. <laughs> Uh, but without any of the drive or effort that is required <laughs> to, um, to um, be, an, be an actor. And we've worked on so many great projects for ABC Education, but one of the ones that I'm most proud of and one of that was most exciting was an animation series that we made called Mini Beast Heroes. And we made this beautiful um, animation that you can see on ABC Education and on iView. But we used um, new technologies to um, create virtual bugs so that you can use um, virtual reality headsets and see these bugs in sort of room scale, you know, giant bugs <laughs> with, with a virtual reality headset on. First of all, um, if you're interested in tech, there are so many different career paths that you can take. So often when people say that, you know, they work in technology, people don't imagine that if you're working in book publishing, for example, you do need to have skills that are related to technology. If you're working in communications, you still have to have skills that are related to technology. So don't always think of a really sort of narrow pathway. The subjects that would be most useful for my particular role are ones around communication, working with teams, working with a variety of people. Because in the, my day-to-day -day job, I don't only work with technologists, I work with creative people, um, people who are writers, filmmakers. I have several mentors and people who influence me and inspire me. 
Um, one particular mentor is Mark Scott, who was the former managing director here at the ABC because he was such a great advocate for education and he was also a really great supporter of um, our particular project, ABC Education. The other people who have influenced me and continue to influence and inspire me are my team and I love working with my team and I love coming to work every day. My advice for students who are interested in working in the media is not just to focus on very one aspect. Working in the media, you do have to have a lot of skills that are related to technology, and that is being able to film, being able to edit, being able to record, but also having those core skills of being a journalist, of being able to write, to present, to communicate as well. So working in the media doesn't just mean that you just focus on one very particular thing, you have to have a very broad range of skills. Yvette, Annabelle looks really familiar and I don't know why. Oh Joe, she was at the T4L Awards last year. Oh my gosh, you're right, exactly. <laughs> and we've got something opening soon, haven't we? I know, the T4L Awards, can Absolutely. you believe? Absolutely. <laughs> the T4L Award entries are opening soon. So schools, everyone out there, you need to get your video cameras out, your iPads out and start to produce a video entry to this year's 2019 T4L Awards. Check out the website, make sure you subscribe to T4L News so you know when applications open and how to apply. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see these videos, Yvette. I know. I want to see what cool things are happening in schools. Absolutely. Now, what do we need people to do after today's episode? We need you to share the love, spread the word, get the word out there on the show. Absolutely. Show it in a staff meeting. And guess what? I can't wait to see you guys next time. Now, if you want any more information on anything you've seen in today's show, make sure you check out the links in the description below. Well, we've come to the end of the first T4L show for 2019. Can you believe it? The year in tech has begun. It's going to be your year in tech. I'm Yvette and this is Joe, And we're signing off from the T4L show. <laughs>